What's up guys, this video is going to be all about Blocky's run throughout the Madden Ultimate League season as the 16th seed coming in and ending up with him in the Final Four. Throughout the regular season, he averaged 21.8 points per game, placing him at number 5 in the Elite Conference and 7th overall. Defensively, he allowed a stout 18.4 points per game, ranking him 2nd in the Elite Conference and 5th in the entire league. This performance resulted in him finishing with a 7-3 overall record en route to claiming the number 2 seed for the Elite Conference playoffs. Playbook-wise, he went with the West Coast offensive book centered around the famous Gun Bunch Week scheme while going with the Kansas City Chiefs playbook for the defensive side. Taking a look at the offensive side, Blocky ran 200 offensive plays that we could see on stream with 18 of them being unique play calls. Taking a look at his top 5 called plays here, you can notice the similarities between him and Kiv in that their scheme runs through corner strike and the horizontal stretching it provides when attacking the defense. Other West Coast staples such as Mesh Post and Dig Halfback Out make appearances, as well along with Blocky's go-to red zone and short yardage play, the I-form slot halfback stretch rounding out the top five. He was able to average over 10 yards of play with four different plays, perhaps most impressively with Mesh Post, which was his second most called play. Sustaining a rate of 10 yards per play over 35 play calls is definitely impressive. Here you can see a list of every play we saw Blocky call on stream throughout the regular season. All of this resulted in him going 82 for 113 for over 1100 yards, 11 touchdowns, and only 3 interceptions as he came out with an impressive 127.64 passer rating. On the ground, like most other West Coasters, he was respectable enough that his opponents couldn't completely ignore it. He ran the ball 61 times for 243 yards and 4 touchdowns at just under 4 yards per carry. In total, he amassed 1,257 total yards while averaging 6.29 yards per play, only a quarter of a yard more than Kiv who runs the same style of offense but way less than the likes of Drini and Trueboy who conduct much more run heavy attacks. Blocky ran the ball on just 30.5% of his offensive plays, putting him towards the bottom of the league and at the lowest rate of the Final Four competitors. Something to note is that Blocky has had three heavyweight fights with Skimbo this year, resulting in a lot of preparation and big game repetition against the nickel 335 odd linebacker cross 3 show 2 defense. He has performed rather well against it in the Ultimate League, where he went 18 for 26 for 202 yards and one touchdown in the regular season. This is something to watch as he will be seeing the same defense in his semi-final matchup with Kiv. Defensively, he predominantly hung out in the nickel 335 formation where Tampa 2 was his primary defensive coverage. He called it over 100 times while allowing 6.43 yards per play with it. He was able to compile 14 sacks and 9 interceptions with it as well, so about 20% of the time when calling this play, he was either getting to the quarterback or forcing a turnover. Against awkward matchups or short yardage situations, he liked to go down to 3-4 odd and run either Tampa 2 or Cover 2 sink. Here are the four plays that Blocky called on defense throughout the entire Ultimate League season. In the playoffs, Blocky had the third matchup in his trilogy with Skimbo where he was able to come out victorious by the score of 20-17. Blocky's defense was impeccable in this matchup, holding Skimbo to 10 offensive points as 7 came from a kickoff return touchdown. Along with that, three of his 10 offensive points were set up by a sack fumble deep in his own territory. Essentially holding someone as prolific as Skimbo to 7 offensive points is certainly impressive. Throughout the game, he gave Skimbo fits, sacking him 6 times, intercepting him once, and holding him to an abysmal 23.9 passer rating. Offensively, Blocky was pretty average by his standards going 20 of 28 for 208 yards. However, he was not able to get into the end zone through the air and did throw one interception. His ground game was able to help him immensely though, rushing the ball 24 times for 107 yards and two touchdowns. Blocky was actually so confident in his defense that he reportedly won the overtime coin toss and elected to give Skimbo the ball. He then forced him to go four and out and secured the victory a few plays later. Now let's take a look at this huge third down in his matchup with Skimbo. On long down and distance situations, the popular thing to do on offense is to look for a smart routed corner, out, or in route. These routes generally do a great job of getting in the cracks between the short intermediate zones and the deep ones. In this case, that is exactly what Skimbo goes for. 
With his bunch on the left, he goes to max protect Z-spot setup where he smart routes the corner route, out routes the outside receiver, and puts the solo receiver on a smart routed in route. Blocky calls Tampa 2, but actually makes some severe adjustments that turn it into more of a cover 3 look, and almost identical to another play from the nickel 335 in 3 double buzz. I actually thought that's what he called until I saw Tampa 2 pop up on the previous play graphic. So he takes his two safeties and puts them into what looks like hook curls while inverting his corners and dropping them back into deep thirds. To complement that, he then drops his middle linebacker back into a deep third as well. Now since he took his corners out of their flat zone assignments to compensate, he shoots his slot corner, who is initially blitzing, out to the left flat while sending his right side linebacker to the right flat. He then uses his left side linebacker wherever he sees fit. As the play develops, Blocky knows exactly where he needs to be and travels with the smart routed corner route. On the backside, Skimbo is looking at his smart routed dig to get between Blocky's safeties. A hole appears to be there at first glance, but with the elite talents of Ronnie Lott, and even if Lott doesn't jump the route, it looks like Paul Krause would have gotten there as well, the pass gets undercut and picked off. This would lead to a two possession lead for Blocky that really put the pressure on Skimbo in the late game. I hope you guys enjoyed this rundown on Blocky's journey throughout the Ultimate League. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more tips and competitive breakdowns in the future. As always, thank you so much for watching guys, and until next time, take it easy.